Greetings, prop makers of the world. We are back again for another exciting adventure into the world of fantasy. Well, at least into the fantasy room decor series that this video is becoming part of. This week, we are working on a candelabra. This was uh, a straightforward build using EVA foam, styrofoam, and uh, just paint in a little bit of time. But I've always wanted a proper candelabra as part of my prop builds. So this one has turned out just beautiful. As you can see, it's got a very realistic look. And the best part is, while this thing looks like it weighs 500 pounds, it weighs very little. And the end effect is pretty darn stellar. Anyways. Enjoy the video. Alrighty. So, we're going to start into the candelabra. Um, it's going to be a lot of cutting and a lot of freeform. I'm not going to say, You have to do this exactly like I say or I'll never talk to you again. It doesn't work like that. Seriously. I'm going to give you a basis and I would like you to take it to the next level and have some fun with it. You know, you can have access to every single tool in the entire workshop or you can literally have access to a heat gun and a knife. I want everybody to build this stuff to let them know that you can build this stuff. So, without being too, uh, too verbose, like I have a problem with that, um, <laughs> we're going to start with the base of the chandelier. What's going to happen here? is we're going to be taking the 16 and a half inch piece of garden hose. You can see you know, it's friction fitting the candle in there to test it out. Now this is going to be the main base of the candelabra. The reason I'm doing a pipe is A, it gives you room to put in wires for batteries and the such like that, depending on what you want to do. I'm going to go over how to build this thing using these candles here, right there. Uh, these are battery operated candles. They're going to add a bit of weight So if you're going to be putting this in the prop in a props hand You'll want to reduce as much weight as possible So what I suggest you do is when you go to build this you wire this up So the wires come out the bottom and then they'll feed into the main candelabra So you don't have a lot of weight on the extremity I'm building this as a table prop, but I'm going to be suggesting things you can do to lighten it up and make it work better so six inches is the first square you're going to need this could be the very very base of it and you see once you've got your six inches this is actually not perfectly squared look at that cut gosh uh, i'm going to pretend that was meant to be that way anyways so what i'm going to do here is this is a six by six inch square and i'm drawing these lines across the middle so i across this the uh block so I can pick up my center because it's very important we pick up centers because we're going to be drilling holes for the pipe to go down in there to give it some support so when it goes on. Then you'll be taking your three and a half inch square next. And then what you do is you do the same thing, you draw the squares across. Then what you can do is you can line it up to the lines that you put on your six, draw some lines here. This gives you the space that you have that's freeboard. So you can go now in here and do a little bit of extra design if you so choose. You can even go as far as to put feet on the bottom if you really want to. It's up to you. Um, initially, I'm just going to be using this as a flat base candelabra because I think it'll look cool. And the reason the base is so big is you don't want it falling over. You want it to have some strength and heck, when you're done, you might actually want to put a piece of plywood on the bottom of this to give it some weight so the whole thing doesn't fall over in the lightest breeze. But like I said, I'm building this in the thought that it goes into a hand of a prop somewhere. So you need it to be light so it doesn't stress out all the animatronics. So I'll be back. I'm going to go through. I'm going to do a little bit of design here. I'm going to route this, but you don't have to. Do what you can with the tools that you have. If you only have access to a Dremel, you can sculpt the sides. Heck, if you only have access to a knife, put a 45 degree angle edge on the edge of this and you're done. Don't be intimidated on doing a project because you don't have the exact tools that you need. I don't want that to happen. I want everybody to know that this stuff's accessible and anyone can do it literally on their kitchen table. I'll be back. All right. We are back and you can see here those two pieces, the three and a half inch and the six inch are all done here. And I took out an extra little bump out of it. I will make sure I throw this up on a Google Doc, this pattern, just in case you want it. You don't have to do it, and if you do, do whatever you want here. Just make it look cool. 
All I want to make sure is when I routed it that it didn't hit here. I might also do a little bit of a tutorial later on in how I get these pieces of styrofoam to hold down while I'm trying to route them. Because routing styrofoam is like a rodeo because one little tiny move and you wreck it. You can see here, even here, where I just pushed on the wheel ever so slightly too much aid into it. But you don't have to route this. You can just do a chamfered edge. I'm assuming that you're going to just do a chamfered edge. But I want to show you what other options you have on this. So now... These holes at the top were cut at 7 eighths of an inch. I used a Forstner bit. If you've never seen one of those, it's a big round bit that is good. It still cuts rough. You can see how when I start, it's tough to do it. What I suggest, if you don't have access to a Forstner bit, drill a hole and then just use a hand file after drawing a circle on there and get it to close. You don't want this hole to be exact because what you're trying to do is you want this to friction fit. Now. What we're going to be using is, is because this is pretty much two inches here holding the vertical up, this is set up in such a way that if when you go to get this thing straight up and down, before you glue it, you can use and you can displace that top piece there to make sure that you can get it as close as possible. And then when you're done, you can just do a little mark. So when you glue this on, this is going to keep this exactly vertical because there's so many things that can go wrong when trying to get this just right. Now, in the uh, list, you're going to have to make some of these. Now, these are inch styrofoam. They are three and a half inches long by two inches wide. I went with this size because it's easy to work with and it'll fit in my hot knife so I can do some texturing here without having to really screw around. Once again, no hot knife. Take a razor blade, chamfer the edges, take some sandpaper. Once this is cut out on the inside, I'll show you what happens to happen there. You can make this up however you want. Have some fun. You just got to make sure you respect the fact that there's a pipe in the middle of this. So now, once again, get the two pieces stuck together. Use tape that's better than this painter's tape, which I don't know what it actually sticks. I've got a roll of it around and it, never, it just doesn't stick. I don't know where it's actually used for. I think it's gentle. Uh, painter's tape but for the life of me I have yet to find a circumstance where this tape will actually stay down without peeling back up again in five seconds I hate it I'll never buy another roll of this but I'm gonna use it up anyway see it is actually listed as delicate <laughs> delicate my butt anyways set a protractor or if you really are brave you can just use a circle stick it on top and trace around it but it's hard to centralize a circle without a center point so I suggest you go go buy a cheap uh, set. Make sure you always have a protractor around. Now this, what you do is you just punch it into the center. Set this to be just over half an inch. So when you're all done, no, just under half an inch. So when you do the circle, it'll make sure... Oh, listen to me. I'm literally stepping over myself. You want this to be slightly over half an inch. You don't want to be fighting it on this pole when you're trying to put it in. So cut this just a little bit bigger than an inch. Like I said, I think I went... Uh, just over half an inch on this to make sure that when the pipe goes in and I cut around it that the pipe and you can actually see that won't be fighting this as you're going up you don't want to have to you want the seam here to be to be nice and sealed up so now I'm going to go take these if you don't have access to once again don't have access to a hot knife or what you can do is you can lie use a ruler line this up dig it out and you can even square this off it just removes a little bit of the fun you can have on the sides here. That's why I'm kind of doing a circle. So I'm going to cut these out. And what this becomes is this is becoming the first tier. And then here becomes the second tier. And then from there, we work our way up. Anyways, actually, no, there's a whole bunch of little extra stuff that goes in here. And there's a bunch of extra stuff that goes in here. Can't even see it on the camera. I won't get ahead of myself. I'll do exactly as I'm going to do. I'll be back after I cut these out and I've got these chamfer down a bit so you can have an idea what the heck I'm going to do with it. <laughs> okay, we're back and we're continuing on the lovely adventure of this. So when we left off, we had these as squares and I said you're going to be cutting out the center and you didn't want this to be tight. The reason is, is because it's going to be sliding down over the center column of your candelabra. Now, what I did here is I used a knife just to score the surface to make it look like wood. I actually used wood glue to put these together because I wanted a lot of tensile strength so it doesn't just pull apart. So when you see that extra little edge there, it blends in, you know, it's not that big of a deal. 
But once you've got all of the surface scored with the knife, you take a heat gun and you hit it gently. And what happens is it shrinks the styrofoam and it will split open the wood grain really nicely. Don't overdo this. It is very easy to overdo, so just be careful. Test it on another piece if you're not completely familiar with doing this trick because you don't want to put in all this work of making this part here and then going, okay, uh, now I have to redo it again. So the next thing we're going to need is a whole bunch of EVA circles. These look a bit rough. I still have to polish them down, but this was more for checking fit and finish and all that stuff. So you're going to need four circles that are two and a half inches. The, the list is down below if you need to check it again. And then initially you're only gonna need one of these little guys here, which is the uh, two inch. Now in the center of each of these, you'll see that I've got a secondary hole punched out. And yes, you will hate me by the time you're done here because there's so many hole cuttings on this that yeah, it just takes patience, like watch TV or something while doing it. So now what you're gonna do is this center area here, you wanna cut it to be about seven eighths. You don't want to make this one here the perfect, like you don't wanna make it loose on here because what happens is all this gets friction fit quite nicely. So, and it's just a matter of, we're gonna be gluing this after, but for now we can just push all these items down, see how they friction fit. And you can start to get an idea of how this candelabra is all assembled. Now, if you use a smaller diameter pipe for this, you can do more with this. Right now, you can see just how close I am to that edge, so I can't do a lot of fanciness with it. I wanted to keep this as plastic pipe because I wanna keep it nice and light and I needed a good bit of strength there. So now it's just a matter of assembly. So you'll be able to spin this and it'll look better when painted. Everything looks a bit off before it gets painted. And then what you'll do is if you have a specific way, you just line it up like that and you can already see that the candelabra is coming together. Now, the next step here is a bigger one. I'm just gonna move the camera up again just so we can see the top. There we go, sorry for that. So, you're going to go and on the template on my Google Drive down below, you're gonna find this little doobie, this doohickey. If you have a hot knife, this part is a lot easier. If not, you can use a scroll saw, and if not, a coping saw. But if you wanna make a simple set chandelier, you make two of these. If you wanna make a complicated chandelier, you do four chandelier. Candelabra! If you wanna do a complicated candelabra, you do need to make four of these out of one inch styrofoam. And once you've got that, what you're going to do is you're going to, in a roundabout way, end up with something that looks like this. Now, what I've done is I cut it out with my hot knife, and I, like I said, I don't like to keep things out of the range, but oh man, hot knife made my life easy on this thing. So I cut out four of these, and then all I did was using a Dremel with, uh, let's see if I can get it up here, with a sanding drum on it. All I did was I chamfered the edge, and then I just hit it at certain points to make it look, I want this to look like wrought iron metal, which you've seen me do before. This is not a... New thing, if you haven't, if you watched my videos before, you know that this is like, you look at that and you go, oh, someone's doing metal. So, and then once you've got it all done, hit it with the heat gun. Super gentle. You don't want these to warp too much because you've got four of them, or two of them, depending on what you're doing. And you want them to kind of hold their shape. Now, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to, how things are going to work out here. Now, these are going to actually be glued in as part of the vertical here. So I'm just gonna spin this just a little bit. I'm just friction fitting them in there for now. I'm using the top foam just to hold them in place so you can get an idea of how the chandelier is going to be coming together and how you're going to be going about building this monstrosity. That's well, not a monstrosity, it's actually... A <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Nothing but the most professional for you. So, you get an idea now of what the chandelier... What is with me today? You're going to get an idea of what the candelabra is going to look like in its rough form. Now, this is all built really, really light. Like, this doesn't even weigh, this doesn't even weigh half a pound yet. And what's going to happen is, is once we've got all these in, 
I am not quite sure how I'm doing this center point here. I'm going to be back to talk about that because I think I might wrap this with EVA so the contact cement will bond better because I've never actually tried bonding contact cement to this plastic pipe, this PVC. I'm going to go try that. Regardless, I wanted to get you to this point. These, you can go and uh, sand them down and heat gun them to make them look a bit better. And once we got to this point, you'll see that we're starting to get closer to an actual candel candelabra. I actually said the right word this time. Holy. Must be Tuesday. Regardless, I'll be back. If I change it, whatever I decide in here, I'll explain to you just after. I just didn't want to get too far along and have it suddenly go, hey, look, it's a done candelabra. Uh, thanks for joining me. So I'll be back after I uh, get this thing sorted out and we'll talk about how everything comes together here. All right. We come upon the perils of building stuff on the fly and various materials not working together. These have been miserable to get into place, but hopefully I found a system that will work. I, I'll explain what happened and what goes on. Well, you know, when I go to glue the bottom, of course, the glue sticks in here, but it melts it out. I'd actually built some channels in here specifically for the glue to go in to hold this all together. So when you glue, it goes into the channel, melts the styrofoam but the amount that it melted the styrofoam was significant. It was to the point where I was worried that when we're up here on this area that you'd see it. So I had to kind of, initially I was going to wood glue it. Like this is all secondary support because in reality, these four screws at the top do the majority of the holding on these vertically. So, you know, there's a lot of tensile strength there because all of your cantilevered weight goes here. So as long as this point here is held the strongest, any weight down here is gonna cantilever into the center post, making the thing stable. But this horizontal wiggle was the spot that I was really concerned about. So what I ended up doing, much to the backstory, but sometimes, you know, the creation process is as interesting as the actual finish process. I'm just gonna clean that up a bit. Now, what I did, is hopefully I can get it here. On the styrofoam, I wood glued a piece of eighth inch EVA, the thin stuff, the hobby foam. The whole purpose of that was to give a buffer between the foam and the hot glue. So this will absorb the heat of the hot glue. It better, it's better. And it'll also allow me when I put the hot glue in to follow the, the uh, curvature of the actual center point here. Now what I did, I'm just gonna spin it here slightly so you can see it. You can see how each one got put in and progressively I just glued down the center here. And each time I'd glue down the center. Oh, if I can get that down there. Sorry if the angle's a bit. You can see where I did the EVA foam and then the glue. And then that sucker is tight now. Because the EVA foam protects the main blue styrofoam, it stops it from melting. This is, like I said, one of those fun things where, you know, oh crap, I can't do this on the fly. Initially, I was going to do a nice big, you know, square base up here and put them in horizontally. But I didn't like the way that looked. I liked the organic look of the top of the chandelier. So what I decided to do was to literally just go and cover it with air dry clay. And when I'm done, that's gonna look like almost like a weld or a bit of metal regardless. It's going to hide all of my imperfections. And this is just, wow, this is just like Crayola stuff. And all I'm doing is I'm taking it, rolling it flat, and then just sticking it into the gaps to cover up those horrible joints. I'm not gonna say absolutely horrible joints, but they're by all means not the best. I don't have to do this one as much because very rarely people will be viewing this from the bottom. So if I just cover up the, the basis of those joints with us a little bit of air dry clay. You can use other stuff, but air dry clay is easy. And once it's in place, I don't have to look at it again. And just like that, you know, it just cleans it up and makes it look like the whole thing is integral, like it was built to be together. And now the only problem is it slows me down a little bit because I gotta wait for the air dry clay to go. 
Got a little bit of a drip of glue there, so we're gonna have to take off with a knife. But there we go. That is how you get the basis of the actual, you know, thing, the actual candelabra done. And now when we put this upper ring on, you'll see that it covers all those screw holes. I still have to do some contouring on this one, but you can see all down here, I contoured all of these ones and then heat gunned them just to make them look nice. And what I did to get these glued on is I hit with the glue gun on the vertical and then push it down from the top. And what it does is it cools a little bit on the post and when I push it down, it's actually causing it to stretch and glue it down nicely. The EVA foam reacts to the hot glue 10,000 times better. So I could actually do a hot glue on the flats on this, but the moment there's any connection with the styrofoam, I had to be careful because it just ate it away. But as you can see, the candelabra is coming together really nicely now. And with a little bit of patience, waiting for that air dry stuff to dry, which will probably be tomorrow. The, the, the timing is you'll never see it, but I'll be back because we can still work on these and you can see there is a lot of strength there. Like you would break that styrofoam before you break that joint. And this whole thing weighs maybe half a pound at this point. What a great prop to be used for a ton of stuff. This was me experimenting. Now I got to go cut another one. So I'll be back when we are actually, you know what? I just realized I had everything here to explain the next step. Now, we're going to be putting these on. We're going to be, once again, chamfering all these edges to make it look nice. Now, what happens is you're going to be putting this here on and you're going to be putting a single screw through the top. This is the important part because there's lots of variation. This is styrofoam. We're not expecting like absolute precision because anything can cause this to shrink. So what I've done is the design of this is set up in such a way that the next star point you'll do is you'll be gluing those two onto the top. Now, almost could. You could friction fit that in without the pipe here. But then everything would have to be made smaller and I don't want to do that. So what happens is you're going to be taking your candle and sticking it into this. Now what the benefit of this is, is it gives you a decent amount of variation on angle. So what happens now is you're going to insert this into there when it's, when it's all glued because I don't want to force against it right now. And of course, take your precautions when you're doing this because you can snap it off very easily. There's, that's a lot of force to be putting down. You'll see that it allow you to adjust the candle to make sure it stays vertical. But anyways, this is where we're going to go. I have to go build another three of these, get them all chamfered up, and then I've got to build the other ring for here. <laughs> but <laughs> I won't bore you anymore. I'll be back. All right, we are making fantastic progress here. now. These candles are your standard taper type candles. I hate this red. I know they're Halloween candles. These are supposed to hang from the roof. I've got to get rid of the red. And the last time I tried painting it, I used this horrible Citadel paint that stinks like ammonia for three weeks. Ghastly stuff. So I got to figure out how to get rid of that red on there. I even tried nail polish remover on one of them here. Oh, it was one of them. It's anywhere. Regardless. So. I'm just gonna take these off for now. I'm gonna show you how I went about doing these as a setup here. And as you can see, these actually have really good strength here. So I'm really happy with how this actually turned out. Okay, so if you look deep inside of there, maybe you can get it right. Let me look at this, that one's a bit better. So all you do is this is your inch and a, inch and a half inch, inch and a half, one inch pipe, same as what you use for the main base. And what I did is this part here, oops, sorry guys. This part here, I screwed down into the actual neck of this. Then this one here, I put, these are both cut with the holes in it. So it goes around the tube. I put the tube on there, put the tube on there. And then all I did is I filled the bottom with hot glue. And what it does is it bonds to the bottom and bonds to the wall. So this gets a really good hold on it. See, these still have to, I still have to glue that on, but once you've got it to there, it's not going anywhere. And you need a really good connection for the torque that the candles put on these. And as you can see, there's really good strength here now. Like th this holds up beautifully for it. Um, 
my air dry clay is all dry now and that'll look better once I get it all done. The only other thing that I've done is I've taken a, a, a mixture of wood glue and water, very, very light on the water, lots on the wood glue, and I painted this whole thing to give it a hard coat. So when I go to paint it, the uh, spray paint doesn't corrode the whole thing, which, you know, spray paint and styrofoam. Lovely combination there. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go paint this, and once I'm back, I will go over the the dry brushing, what I, actually I'm not gonna go over the dry brushing, I'll just link videos up there somewhere, but I'll show you what I did in terms of color I, coloring this, and, but anyways, next time you see this, it'll look a lot more complete, it'll look black, and I will take it from there, but anyways, I'm really liking how this thing's turning out. The weight is nice and light right now. If you're going to be putting this into the hand of a prop, the one thing you're going to have to do different than what I've done here is, and it's kind of set up for this, is on the underside here, you're gonna take a hot uh, soldering iron and you're going to put a channel to here and then you're gonna drill down from the top to get to that so you can get a wire up into here because like uh, especially with my candles here this one candle because it has two AA batteries in it weighs almost as much as the entire candelabra together right now so you know if you're gonna do it you want to make sure that you know it's got some strength there and it should hold but it's a concern that you may have if you've got it in a hand of a static prop it'll be completely fine because it's not gonna be moving a heck of a lot this will take the bounces and the hits because it's, like I said, it is stable as heck. But more than anything, I'm worried about these candles falling out because it's only friction fit there. Anyways, I'll be back once I finish painting this thing. Okay, so we're all painted and uh, yeah, I missed some spots with some glue on this thing. So you can see that here, this is what happens when your glue coverage is not perfect. And this is what happens when your glue coverage is better. Yeah, I'm getting a bit of bubbling because it did get underneath it because of just how it is. But it's going to work. You know, it's going to... I have a new quote. It's not a screw up, it adds character. There we go. It's not a screw up, it's character. Now, uh, where is it here? So you can see all these beautiful, nice finish, nice finish, nice finish, and corrosion. So <laughs> this is what happens when you forget to seal something with glue. But being this is metal, this is a quick lesson on how to make really well done pitted metal. It looks actually fantastic. So I'm gonna work this into the actual thing. It's, it's steel anyways. So here we are, we are ready to go and paint and dry brush. So I'm gonna go and do that and then when I'm done, I'll come back and I'll explain what I did because you know, you don't need to see me dry brush for 15 minutes to get this thing exactly where I need it to be. Anyways, I'll be back. All right, we are all done and painted up and I love the way this thing looks. So, it was pretty much uh, straightforward. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this is the paint that I used to do the initial coat, a flat soft iron. Now what's really surprising me is up until now, I've been using this one, which was the oil rub bronze, and I'm gonna go back to this one. This sucker is metallic, holy man. I can barely see the silver dry brushing. It is so metallic. And I'd prefer to have had it more like my other, like my uh, shadow vein sign with a bit more definitive difference between the black and the silver, but this works, it looks fine. So, all I did is on, these wooden parts here. I started with a coat of dark brown. I think this is, uh, is gonna get cinnamon brown, even though it looks nothing like cinnamon. It's not nearly red enough. And uh, then I went through and then dry brushed with my cashmere tan color, just to get something close to this. Then when I'm all done, I use some uh, rubbing oil, some, uh, some wood stain gel oil, and I think it was just pine. And what it does is it just evens up all the colors and it gives it a little bit of a, I like the way it looks. So I do it on quite a few things. Now up here, you will see, hopefully, man, that light is just completely washing it out. Anyways, I'm gonna see if I get it here. 
I used a little bit of these three colors all over the place. Um, you pro I'm probably going to see a better version of this at the beginning of the video, so if you need to reference how I actually painted this, check the beginning because I need to change the lighting here a little bit. So anyways, I used pretty much Mars Black, that can just be any black at all, but anyways, these two are your best friends, Raw Umber and Burnt Umber, and I'm going to bring this up here because you will see it down here. You can see how I used a little bit of brown just to add some, some details to this thing. Because I like the way it looks when you get a little bit of variation in the color. Even up here, you'll see that there's a little bit of variation in the color. There's a little bit of rust here. Not a lot. You don't want to be over the top. You see, I put a little bit of... And when I was all finished, before I forget, I used a tiny bit of copper to do just the tiniest little hits where I wanted a bit more color. And you can see it there. And then I took some of that same uh, gel when I was the gel varnish when I was done and just dropped it on a few spots to add some color to it. But anyways, that is the finished result. And you can see, it's a great candelabra. It looks real, and that is what our main goal is. And it fits in with the rest of the stuff that we've been working on lately. But anyways, so we are all done for this video, and it's been a fun one. Well, at least it's been fun for me, you know. So. If you have any comments and or have any questions or I seriously skipped steps that you don't quite understand, please let me know in the comments below. I will fix it up as best as I can. Um, beyond that, uh, you will see the finished version of this with the candles in at the beginning of the video. Anyways, thanks so much for hanging out everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you don't build this specifically, I hope you build something like it. This is a really good base. And you can do a lot of mucking around to really make this candelabra. Make it into your own and really have some fun with it. Anyways, um, tune in next time. I don't know what's coming up next, but every week is a surprise. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button. Or even better, if you like it so much, you hit the subscribe button. I think the like button's there and the subscribe button's over here. Whatever one you hit, I'll be happy with. Have a good one, all. See you on the next video.